Having a bit of a to and fro in the comment section of Anti Bullshit Man's latest video, where he deals with, I guess, veganism and how to sort of spread the message type thing. Um, and um, I guess what it boils down to, I, I suppose, is consequentialism, consequentialism in ethics, and perhaps, if I may say so, what I might call hard consequentialism. Um, now, the argument is that it doesn't really matter why people do the right thing as long as they do the right thing. I would say that that's a dangerous, or perhaps not dangerous, but it kind of, it, there's dangers inherent in it, in that kind of thinking, because what I believe that is going to do, if you sort of, if people sort of become, say, vegans for, because it's all the go, or uh, because it's in, or uh, because um, they want to be seen as an ethical person, even though they're not particularly ethical, or whatever, as long as, you know, the the I guess the consequentialist position would be as long as they've reduced the amount of harm done to animals, it doesn't really matter. Well, yes and no. If you forget everything else, if, you know, ceteris is paribus, uh, then, okay, you've you've actually managed to um, reduce harm. And if that's, if everything devolves to that, uh, which I disagree with, <laughs> um, then, okay, you have actually... Uh, done what is necessary to be ethical. Problem with that is, of course, um, you sort of, it, there's a lot of unintended consequences of that kind of thinking, and one of the major ones that I'm sort of debating right now with him, Andy Bullshit Man, is the fact that if you have somebody that you go to who is the arbiter of morals and ethics in your society, in other words, if you don't really think it through, you're going to end up with something along the lines of a priesthood. Um, even if it's just sort of an unofficial one. You're going to have trendsetters instead of um, ethical thinkers. And if your ethics are just a trend and you haven't really thought them through, then you're not really even being um, all that ethical, if you ask me. You're simply attempting to fit in. Now, of course, there is something, there is an ethical case to be made for fitting in and towing society's line and that sort of thing, but again, the unintended consequence of this kind of consequentialism uh, is the creation of moral arbiters in society. Now, an old argument is that we're, that religious-based ethics are all based upon some sort of mythology or based upon some sort of idea that um, God said this and this is why we're doing it. And I don't agree with that 100%. I think that there's an element of that in there. But I think that, that Historically, priests have always been very clever people. Very clever. Um, I, I think that most of them probably never really even believed in the religions that they were propagating. What they believed in was the in, ad, advancement of their own power and their own uh, agendas. And half-truths are a lot more useful to that end than just inventing something and sort of saying, this is the way of things. Uh, Anti-bullshit man seems to be implying that um, religion-based ethics are purely woo. Now, I don't think he's, he's an intelligent man, and I don't think that he's he's saying that, but I think his emphasis it seems to be, he believes that the emphasis there is on the woo. Uh, you do right and wrong because, you know, God said so. He, you know, I think that he's saying that that's essentially what religion-based ethics are, and I disagree with that. I think that um, you end up... Uh, or rather, the whole process begins with ethical thinking, and a bunch of people who make make ethical thinking their business, um, and uh, and then they tack on all this woo stuff to take all this commonsensical stuff about ethics and and morality and everything, and then they tack on all the woo to, for two purposes: to get it to sink into people's minds, because most people haven't got time to, or the inclination even. To examine their own ethics, um, but if you you know if you have carefully worked out ethical codes, which most priestly castes do, um, it, in other words, it's not all just craziness. M you know the, the the bit about not murdering other people, or the bit about um, not stealing, or the bit about not being generally socially disruptive, or being pointlessly cruel, or whatever, which almost every religion teaches, uh, is not just woo. It's not just something that somebody pulled out of a hat randomly in a draw. They, they actually, you know, some thinking went into it. 
and it was you know it was these were rules that were sort of come up with that were sort of developed with an eye to a real world situation where you know we need rules to manage ourselves as a society but the priests of course said most people aren't going to do this for that reason they're not going to do it be they're not going to avoid murder for all the carefully thought out reasons why an ethicist would say we don't want to have murder they just said we have to sell it to the public so the public um, who doesn't want to think but you know but we still need rules we just say because God said so uh, I don't think as I say the the emphasis is not on the mythology came first and then the ethical thinking I would say the ethics came first and then the mythology was used as a justification for that um, but the priest had other things that he wanted to do um, he wanted to take this obvious or you know generally agreed upon set of principles ie ethics and then he said it's God said that that's the way of things and I'm God's arbiter therefore I'm the one who's going to be doing all the ethical thinking because a you people don't understand God's ways which is just another way of saying you people don't want to think for yourselves um, and also it just so happens that you need me or else there's going to be chaos in society so I want you know my yearly quota of the more attractive young women in the tribe I want my yearly quota of cooked chickens I want my yearly quota of massages I want my yearly quota of um, ceremonies where I'm the guest of honor and I want everyone to treat me like I'm something really special um, <clears throat> that's I think one of the big problems with Wu in religion uh, is that it can always be abused it, and it can it can drift in this way because if you get into the habit of mind of saying well whatever the priest says is right you're not really thinking for yourself anymore and you've ab you've arrogated all your uh, your rights and your ethical thinking to somebody else and they do it for you in return for that you've surrendered some of your own personal autonomy uh, you've surrendered your ability to sort of think for yourself and in certain cases if you get an advanced priestly uh, society say like medieval Europe um, or I guess even in much of the Islamic world today you get priests that have pretty much uh, ironclad grip on an entire society uh, think about say medieval Catholicism where the priest decided who went to heaven and who went to hell now think about that the, the priest had the means of determining where you fit into things forever in the grand scheme of the universe now that is power and especially if you can actually get people to think that you're absolutely right in that regard um, so the one leads to the other if you ask me if you don't actually think about why you're trying to be a good person that you're just having your ethics fed to you it automatically spawns something along the lines of a priesthood and once the priesthood has arrived they can pretty much twist things however they want because you have ceased to think for yourself this kind of gets lost in the vegan argument when you sort of say okay well we're not we're not we don't want to create a priesthood or anything like that we just want people to do the right thing well all right why are they doing the right thing because just general social pressure because somebody who's got carefully worked out ethical ideas grafted it on to just because that's the way of things and remember a priest doesn't necessarily have to be sort of talking about some pie-in-the-sky stuff I would argue that any kind of a role model or any kind of a, a person whose opinions are widely respected um, is something of a priest if you're setting trends, if you're using emotions to get people to believe a certain way, if you're using rhetoric, if you're using poetry or art or woo of any kind at all, and that includes things like TV shows, that includes things like commercials, uh, that includes things like um, like uh, just you know fiery speeches or whatever, where you uh, uh, where you're appealing to people's belly instead of their head, um, that is a priesthood. I would call Madison Avenue, you know the the advertisers par excellence as priests they're telling you this is reality in a TV commercial 
is as much of a religious and metaphysical experience, or it's intended to be, as it is just something uh, that's selling you a product. Uh, they're selling they're, 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 the the implication with most advertising is I'm not just selling you a product, but you buy this product and you get this wonderful reality that is portrayed in the in the um, the commercial. So, same thing with ethics. If you just sort of simplify it for people that don't really want to think it through, you're sort of putting yourself above them. You're sort of saying they can't really think for themselves, but I know what's best for everybody and everything, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a spin on it to get them to believe it in a, in a different way than the way in which I believe in something. I came to this by you know rationally thinking it out, whereas they can't really do that or they don't want to or whatever, so I will just sort of spin to get them to toe the line, I suppose, because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I do to them as long as they stop eating meat. Dangerous. Um, very dangerous. And I think that that's a way in which religion and priests always come about, always are spawned. Um, if people don't really examine their own ethics, if people don't really do the right thing for the right reasons, then what you've got is you've got a situation in which you've just got you know the the sort of traditional Protestant nightmare of a blind mob of semi uh, literate peons being tightly controlled by this wily, clever, manipulative priest who can appeal to people's subconscious to their emotions, to their fears, and this sort of thing. That's exactly the sort of tool that is implied is okay in a, in a hard consequentialist view of things like veganism, um, where it doesn't really matter why people are doing the right thing as long as the end result is the right thing gets done. There are consequences to consequentialism of this nature.